Cereza and the Lost Demon. Long ago, there existed two clans, the Lumen Sages of Light and the Umbra Witches of Darkness. Together they controlled a mysterious power. The clans put in place strict laws to ensure that strife would never consume them. But a pair of star-crossed lovers broke this rule and a child was born with the blood of both sage and witch. It was a beautiful baby girl. As punishment for their forbidden love, the pair were torn asunder. The girl's sage father was exiled to a far land and her mother locked away in a solitary jail. The witch clan took in the young girl, but she grew up shunned as a pariah, cursed by the circumstance of her birth. Her one comfort was the night she snuck into the village jail to visit her mother's cell. Her mother passed each grueling day, barely able to so much as move in her cold cell. But when her daughter came to visit, the witch always showed her a loving smile. But even this small happiness eventually came to an end. On the night of the girl's tenth birthday, her mother was to be moved to a deeper cell, where even the faintest memory of daylight could not reach her. In desperation, the girl tried a daring rescue, but with only a child's strength, the attempt was in vain. More alone than ever before, the young girl clung to all she had left, a stuffed cat named Cheshire, which her mother had made for her long ago. Many moons have since passed. Turning her back on the village, the girl was taken in by an exiled witch who lived on the outskirts of town. Under her strict guidance, the girl continued to train in the ways of the dark arts. She was determined to be a powerful witch and one day save her mother. Her name was Ceresa. Something's there. 
this place? you're doing? Cereza, you're almost out of time. This is your last chance. If you don't hurry, you may never see your mother again. John. Oh, you big baby. Come on, I'll lead the way. We don't have all night. Sean, wait! I can't run that fast! We're almost there! Hurry up! to me. You hurry on ahead. Wait! John! Oh, 
What is this? Don't, don't come any closer. That dream again. But the ending. It was a dream Ceresa knew by heart. But this time, something had changed. Ceresa decided to consult her friend Cheshire. A strange boy appeared and told me something incredible. He said, if I went to Avalon Forest, he'd give me a fantastic power. If we had that, rescuing Mummy would be a piece of cake. The Forbidden Forest. The oft-repeated warning from Cerveza's teacher rang in her ears. Avalon Forest is home to fairies, creatures who love to whisk away children. Stay away. Teresa! Where are you, my dear? Teresa's teacher Morgana was standing by the door, her frown discernible even from a distance. Chores neglected, and I find my apprentice enjoying her beauty sleep. I'm sorry. Uh, I just closed my eyes for a second. I, I was. I. Ceresa uh... began making an excuse, but Morgana's scowl stopped her in her tracks. Yes, ma'am. I'll get to them right away. But despite her best intentions. Ceresa's gaze drifted back to... This did not go unnoticed by Morgana. Oh. If I've told you once, Ceresa, you must never enter that forest. With your current abilities, you would soon become a snack for one of the fairies who live there. Yes, Morgana. I know. Well then, stop your dreaming and finish those chores before moonrise, young lady. All right. Water from the well. A simple yes will suffice, Cereza. Oh. Despite her strict exterior, Cereza had grown attached to her teacher. Morgana had also been cast out of the village. She understood Cereza's pain, and her stern treatment came from a place of love.
Sarisa often reminded herself that these chores were all part of her training. Eager to please her master, she hurried off towards the well. Fetching a pail of water, it may seem like a simple chore, but it requires a fine sense of control, making it perfect for umbran training. After laying eyes on the full bucket, Morgana gave a small nod of approval. Good. Now collect the herbs from the garden. Oh. oh. At the thought of herbs, Ceresa could not help but make a face. This is one job she wished could be forever stricken from her regimen. Do we have a problem? No, ma'am. Trying not to think about the task awaiting her, Ceresa headed towards the herb garden. The herbs in Morgana's garden were not your common basil or thyme. She grew infernal plants with an absolutely foul stench. They typically burrowed to avoid sunlight, but a little bit of magic made them pop right up. of magic coming right up. Just a bit more. There we go. <laughs> oh, no one told me they could do this. I've got to catch it quick. Teresa was pleasantly surprised. She usually managed to make a mess with even this rudimentary... I can't wait to see the look on Morgana's face. 
Ceresa hummed a happy tune while picking the herbs. As she bent down, she noticed a pretty flower growing amongst the weeds. Oh, those flowers would really bring out the color in Morgana's eyes. I wouldn't mind if it weren't for the smell. Ceresa proudly gave the basket to Morgana. It was full to bursting. How about that, Morgana? Quite the harvest, wouldn't you say? I also picked these violets. They're for you. I thought you might like them. Atop the herbs lay a small wreath. Morgana glanced down at it. Her expression unchanged, she spoke to Ceresa in her usual tone. Do not expect praise for this sort of perfunctory performance. Oh, and Ceresa, your hair today seems to have lost its sheen. Do not tell me that in addition to your outdoor tasks, you're also neglecting your hair. Uh, no, ma'am. It's next on my list. Uh, remember, Ceresa, hair is the most versatile tool of an Umbra witch. It can be shaped into our armor, weapons, and even used as a medium for summoning infernal demons. As blood flows through veins, magic flows through a witch's hair. Care. Understood. I'll make sure to finish up before training starts tonight. Good. Now get back to your chores. The shadows grew long. The... With this, Morgana turned and walked back towards the house. Yes, ma'am. At times, Morgana's cold treatment got Ceresa down. But she knew that Morgana cared for her and only wanted what was best for her. <laughs> Making a quick recovery, Ceresa resolved to finish her remaining chores in record time. time for today's training. I'd better hurry, or I'm in for another lecture. Okay. With the household chores complete, it was time for Ceresa's daily training in the dark arts. Today, she was finally going to get a chance to attempt a spell she had been practicing for weeks, summoning an infernal demon. For today's training, I will give you a little help. Before even learning what it did, Ceresa was captivated by the intricate brace. This is a tool for those who have yet to master the flow of magic. Furthermore, we train under the full moon of the bisextile night, 
when the dark energy we Umbra harness is at its zenith. <clears throat> Are you listening, young lady? You seem determined today. Perhaps I should let you nap more often. Yes, ma'am. Sarita's spirits were high. She was determined to succeed. performed the summoning dance until <laughs> this looked like trouble <laughs> unless bound by hair there will be no way to control the demon. <laughs> the demon turned to ash mere inches from Cereza. Without a proper medium, demons will soon die in our world. Ah, oh, we are finished for today. Let me try again, please. Morgana turned and walked away, ignoring her pupil's desperate plea. What kind of witch fears her own summoned familiar? I was foolish to think you were ready for this training. Morgana told Teresa to put away the magic brace before heading back to the house. Long after Morgana was gone, Cereza sat moping in the garden. Out of habit, she shared her troubles with Cheshire. Forget returning to the village and saving money. At this rate, I'll never even become a witch. All of a sudden, the words from the boy in her dream echoed in her ears. Teresa, give you the power to save Mother. Avalon Forest, the White Wolf, hide you. Avalon Forest! Teresa's eyes wandered back to the forest. Morgana's repeated warnings left little room for ambiguity. And yet... Morgana is always dangerous this and stay away that. How could a dank old forest be that scary a place anyway? Adults do often exaggerate to keep kids in their place. This thought got Cerisa's blood boiling. Grievances started bubbling. Nothing I do is ever good enough for her. Did you see those herbs? Flawless! As she blew off steam to Cheshire, she noticed Morgana's brace shining in the moonlight. What? Oh, what are you saying, Cheshire? Take the brace and sneak into the forest? Morgana would give us a right smack on the bottom. Although, with the moon shining brightly, it was the ideal chance for a little surreptitious forest excursion. I mean, if I just had another chance to get the hang of it, I could have gotten that demon totally under wraps. With a demon by her side, eviscerating a fairy or two would be child's play. That's it! I'm going!
into that forest. And when I come back with that fantastic power, Morgana will take back everything she said about me not being ready. Let's go, Cheshire. Next stop, Avalon. Ceresa shivered at the thought of what lay ahead, but curiosity got the better of her. Ha. Let's go, Cheshire. And so, Ceresa threw caution and her teacher's warnings to the wind and set out towards Avalon Forest. Little did she know that what lay waiting in those dark woods would change her fate forever. Massive trees blocked almost all light from the moon. An eerie silence enveloped Teresa. She cautiously ventured onwards. Razor, one foot in front of the other. A plant from Inferno. I wonder how it will respond to my magic.
Looking into the dark underbrush, Ceresa could not shake the feeling that someone was looking back. As the wind rustled the leaves, it sounded just like a rasping voice whispered in her ear. I can't turn back now. I'm going to become a witch and save Mummy.